Hi and welcome to Mod Studio. I'm Aton, and in this tutorial, guys, I will show you how you can create a realistic IV within Speedtree. So, without any further ado, guys, let's jump in. So, the first thing that we need to do before we start with all the fun stuff, we need to import the model we want the IV to grow on. So, for in order to do this, we need to head on over to the Mesh tab here and select the plus and minus icon at the top. Once you've done this, you can select new and you can rename this to whatever you like. I'm using a rock from Megascan, so I'll be renaming this to rock. Like so, very simple. So once this is done, you can head on over to the browse tab, select your LOD level one, because Speech, Speechtree doesn't like high poly models. So let's use this one, LOD level one, say yes. And let's flip it like so now to add this to our scene all we need to do is we need to right click in your viewport go to trunk as you can see our trunk is in the scene let's head on over to the spine set this to an absolute value of six and let's head on over to the skin tab and set this to an absolute value of 0 0.04 like so to add the rock or your object to the scene, all you need to do is right click on your trunk, go to add forces, scroll down to geometry and add your rock, like so. It will be automatically selected. So all you need to do is on the left side, reset the translation, go down to scale and set this to 0.02, like so. Now let's in, head on over to the materials tab and i've went ahead and created some materials but it's really simple to create materials all you need to do is head on over to the plus icon add new rename this to rock 2 and click on the color tab it will automatically open where you've loaded your mesh from so in this case i've already located my textures and in this case i will be using the 4k albedo for the color and so on and you just add your appropriate channels like 2k normal on LED level one go to the glossy tab and let's add the uh, specular I'm using this for the glossier tab as well let's set this to two and select the specular as well like so there's your material so in order for to add this material to your object select your object in the viewport let's scroll up and let's include the model once you've done this the material icon will appear and all you need to do is add your rock material to the selected object like so so let's move our um, trunk just a little bit so select your trunk w on the keyboard let's move this out let's head on over to the generator tab and under forces all you need to do is select the blue curve and let's max this out like so and let's head on over to the segments tab and increase the accuracy to 100 like so and if you want the the trunk to go upwards a bit more all you need to do is select your trunk right click add a force let's add direction force press e on the keyboard rotate this upwards Let's just scale this point one so it's not that big of the scene. As you can see, it's working perfectly now. So all we need to do now is add our secondary branches and your third branches and your fourth branches and so on. So before we continue, let's add our bark material. I've went ahead and created one. Very simple indeed. It's like the previous setup as well. So let's just add this to the trunk. Replace branch material like so. So let's add our first set of branches all you need to do is select your trunk right click go to branches and so on let's head on over to the generator tab set the mode to file a taxi all right and the style set it to alternating discotes if i'm saying that right <laughs> so um select that and set this to one we can increase this a bit more to 0.5 or 0.3 like so so all you need to do now is head on over to the forces tab 
enable your rock, select the blue curve again, and max this out. Before we continue and add the direction force, let's head on over to the segments tab, all right, and increase the accuracy to 100 as well. And let's optimize this as well while we're here. So let's set the relative value to 0.35 and give it some radial segments as well to six. Because at the moment it was a little triangle and we don't want that. So that looks good right now. So all we need to do now is let's add the force a little bit of direction upwards. Like let's say for instance, 1.5. Let's select them so we can see where they are. And let's increase the spine length a bit more. Let's say about 0.5, like so. All right, so what you can do now is, let's head on over to the skin tab, select the blue curve in the absolute value, and let's just enlarge the ends a bit. This is needed for the second set of branches to grow on. So once you've done this, select your branches, Right click, add your next set of branches. Let's head on over to the generator tab. Set this to follow taxi as well. And also set this to alternating discotters as well. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's select these and increase this to one. Select those again. We can increase this a bit more. Let's set this to 0 0.5. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Let's increase this a bit more, 0.3, like so. Once you've done this, let's on over to the Segments tab. Increase the Segments to 100 as well. Optimize this to 0.35. Absolute value to 6 as well. And head on over to the Forces tab. Enable your Rock. Select your Blue Curve again and max this out. So it hugs the wall or your Rock or your Asset. And as well, let's select these again. You can add some direction force to this as well. 0.1, like so. And let's increase this a bit more, maybe 2.5. All right, so let's add our third set. Right click again, same process again. Add your branch. So go back to your first set again and Select the skin tab and let's just enlarge this a bit. So there's more room for your next set of branches to grow. So once this is done, select your last set of branches, go to the generator tab, mode, set this to fill out taxi again, style to alternating discotters and set this to one. To five, like so. Once we're here, let's head on over to the segments tab again, set the accuracy to 100. 0.25 because they're so small you can't see them so we can optimize these a bit more and set the radial to 6 again head on over to the forces tab and in the forces tab select the rock again select the blue curve and max this out and for these we don't need to add the direction force because we want we want them to grow everywhere so once we're done with this select your branch this is where the fun stuff begins now, where we can add the leaves and stuff like that. So let's go to the add geometry and select batched leaves. As you can see, they're way too large at the moment. So let's make them a bit smaller. Select the skin tab, make them about 2.25, something like this. So next step is we need to orientate them to the sky like so. All right, so before we continue any further, let's head on over to the materials and I've went ahead and created a leaf ivy. Simple process again, to create ivy, all you need to do is head on over to your plus and minus icon, create your set, load your textures from your designated where you've got them from, I've got them from Mega Scans, and all you need to do is create your cutout in the cutouts mesh, like so. Very simple and add them to your appropriate LOD levels. All right, so the next step is let's head on over to the materials tab again and add this to the batch leaves like so. But it doesn't look like Ivy yet. 
So all you need to do now is let's start curling them a bit. So let's zoom in a bit more and let's curl them downwards a bit and fold them upwards a bit like so. That looks good. So the next step is let's increase the amount on the leaves. So go to absolute value, let's change this to file tax as well. Again, select alternating discotus and let's increase the value to 0.25, even more, 0.1, like so. But still it looks a bit too uniform. So to vary the size a bit more, select the skin, go to the plus and minus icon and set this to something that's breaking this up a bit more like so. So the next step is, is to orientate them a bit downwards. So all you need to go do is select the final adjustments and the up option, let's take them a bit down. But now we don't want the top part to penetrate your object. So all you need to do is select your green curve here, select your trunk layer, and all you need to do is take this value a bit more up, like so. Double click to add a new point. Take those a bit down. Take these a bit up. Like so. Until you find something that looks nice to you. All right. But so we need to vary this a bit more. In order to do this, all you need to do is everywhere in these options, the plus minus icon, all you need to do is add a 0.1 value. And this will vary them up a bit more. Like so. And already that's looking way better, um, but I can see the, the twist value. I've set that too much. So let's put that down to 0.1, like so. And in the skin tab, let's make them a bit smaller where they end on the points. So the leaves on that big and points. So all you need to do is select your green curve and take the, the farthest point a bit down. Add another point here. Take this a bit more up, right click. Double click and make this a Bezier smooth curve, like so. So let's select the this set of branches and it increase the amount a bit more. So let's take this to about 1.5, like so. So I normally shade this within V-Ray and V-Ray has a cool multi subtext option. So you can give some more variations to the leaves. So if you're using V-Ray for 3ds Max or for Maya, you can do it like that. But if you don't have a function like that, I'll show you how you can vary the leaves. Yes, um, I know that the leaf in the settings has these variation function, but I tend not to use this because it creates this weird layer on top of it. So what I normally do is I duplicate this layer, IV copy, and in this copy, I'll set the saturation a bit lower or make it more green, for instance. So now I have a next set of leaves that I can use on my model. So in your batched leaves, let's head on over to the material tab and just hit this little plus icon. Once you've done that, you'll see new cards appear, but we don't have a material to them. This is where you assign your duplicate copy to. So select material and add your leaf IV copy. And that's it. And so on. So let's add another set. So let's select the leaf copy, duplicate this like so. Let's select this. Once it's selected, let's select the color tab and let's make this more green or red, for instance, like this. For illustration purposes, I'll show you this. Once this is done, head on over to your batch leaves, hit the plus icon and add your leaf copy, copy to this one as well. And that's how you can create leaf variations without using the variations tab right at the top there. So one can even go further and add flower models and stuff. Maybe I'll do this in a second tutorial. So. Let me know guys in the comments down below. Tell me what you think of this tutorial and please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and a little bell icon to keep you informed for new content coming soon. So stay safe, take care and see you soon.
Bye-bye.